So, in case you missed that I redid my bookshelves, I figured I'd include them in the book haul since I think a shelf counts as adding a book. <laughs> uh, so what I did here is I added one shelf over here and moved another shelf over to make corner shelves. And then I added another shelf over here so I can keep my mass markets and my mid-sized trades together. So I just kind of wanted to include that in the intro to this book haul because that did happen in April, guys. But let's look at the rest of the books I added to the shelves in April. Hey, what's up, bookworms and book buying enthusiasts? Mike back today to do another book haul, this time for the month of April of 2021. Another month that saw a great extension to the library. As you saw, I had to get some new shelves just to kind of make room for all of the new stuff. Some that I am treating myself to and some that you lovely people continue to send to me. But some that don't take up room are digital books and I like to count these in book hauls. So let's start with my digital purchases for the month. You guys by now know that I really, really, really enjoyed uh, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. So I took this on a sign of good faith and I went ahead and picked up the Wayward Pines trilogy. Now most people, this is where they discovered Blake Crouch because I do remember there was a short-lived television show on about Wayward Pines and that was I think that was the first time I ever heard the name Blake Crouch and then I think it was when Recursion really kind of got big a couple years ago so people were like, man, you was a Michael Crichton guy, you would love this author. So uh, I really did like Dark Matter. I plan to do Recursion sometime this fall when I have a chance. Uh, I don't know when I will get to Wayward Pines but obviously it was something that had a great interest to me so I'm willing to uh, to go off of uh, the, again, the good faith that I had with Dark Matter and think that this is going to be an author that I really, really enjoy. Next up is an author I had never heard of until recently. This is Will White, and the series is called The Cradle. Uh, book number nine just came out, and I thought, I had some people telling me, oh, well, this is, uh, this is the end of that series, is book nine. Well, apparently not. Apparently it is not the end, because I already see there is a, a planned release date for book number 10. But I, like I said, I'd never heard of this author before, and now I can't stop seeing his stuff everywhere. So uh, yeah, I picked up uh, those first nine because that's what I do when I go on my digital shopping thing. It's like, oh, how many complete sets can I get? Or, you know, try to get at least two modern. But uh, again, don't know anything about it. Uh, I thought it was something that uh, I, I had heard a lot. I asked everybody on my Discord about it and they were like, no, I haven't heard of him. So maybe it's just me. Maybe it seems like I am just hearing about this author a lot lately. I see him popping up a lot of the times on Amazon, Amazon Unlimited and things like that where, you know, they're giving the books away basically for free. But a very, very popular fandom there is, I see, online for it. So again, if you guys have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. So uh, again, that's another one. Obviously, I don't know when I'm getting to uh, at this point, I think with series like that. I'd like to wait till they're complete. Uh, the only reason I jumped into Dresden Files when it was that many books behind it was because I thought, you know, uh, well, there's going to be a big release here coming out pretty soon. So that's why I went ahead and did that one. With stuff like this, I'm okay waiting until the series is complete. There are any other uh, uh, palette cleanser style series, if that's what this is, that I think I can use to fill that gap. My, 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 I'm leaning towards Alex Veras right now for when that happens. It kind of be my Dresden replacement until we get more Dresden books. Now we will move on to the physical books that I went ahead and picked up this month. Last month, I picked up the first book in Rift War. Well, this month I picked up book number three. <laughs> uh, I love this collection, this version of them. Uh, I think that they all have the nice matching spines. It's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, the nice gold embossed print here. That's really, really cool. Uh, but they aren't cheap, you know, so I just kind of keep an eye on them. Uh, spoiler alert, I have already ordered part two. It just has to come from uh, overseas to get to me. And uh, that's going to take a little while. So that probably won't be until May, maybe June. I don't know. But again, Rift War is something that's been on my radar for some time. I don't necessarily know when it's going to happen, though. Uh, another one is... You guys know anything about me, I think that banning books is the dumbest thing ever. And all it makes me want to do is get a copy before they either ban it completely or they start editing it. So uh, when I heard that Robert Heinlein's Starship Troopers was one of these that people were trying to get banned, I said, well, I got to pick it up. Uh, because this is, I do remember reading this a long time ago. I think it was probably right after the movie. A uh, little different, but uh, still a, a good time. 
it's a very controversial book for reasons that are up to the reader to decide. But again, anytime something is, is looks like it has a chance, I mean, we're starting to see things where they're editing movies and things like that. I think it's only a certain amount of time before they pull all the original versions of books off the shelves and start editing those. Uh, it's something that I'm very, very against. But uh, it, again, I only can control certain things. And what I can't control is buying these books now before this happens to them. And then last up for, uh, well, not last up. There's one more after this. But I really, really enjoy Hyperion by Dan Simmons. Uh, again, another thing that isn't really a secret if you've watched the channel. So I took that on good faith that I'm going to love this author. So I went ahead and picked up Ilium. Uh, this is a series uh, I've had some people tell me they think it's better than Hyperion so a slower start but uh, yeah you got like uh, I think it was Chris Verrocchi on my discord who said that's the author of the Sun Eater series he said it's uh, it's Odysseus fighting robots and I said oh well, shit son sign me up so uh, another one that's not on the radar anytime soon I'd like to finish um, uh, I'm finishing a fall of Hyperion sometime this month and then I'll be moving on to Endymion before I get to Ilium, but I don't think that Dan Simmons is going to be an author that I uh, continue to put off like I put off uh, Hyperion for so many decades. I don't think that's going to continue to happen. A series you guys have probably heard me talk about a lot lately, and it's so weird because it's a series. These are heavy. It's a series that uh, I've never read. I don't know anything about them. The author is just really engaging on social media, super nice. And what I've heard about her series and the feedback I have heard from the people who have read it is very, very good. I'm talking, of course, about Melissa McPhail's uh, Pattern of Shadow and Light series. Now, I already had these first two books, and it was one of those I kind of just kind of kept an eye on price watches on Amazon. And so I just decided one day to look at her website because it's so weird how I haven't read this series, but I'm so interested in the journey of her writing this. She updates her blog on this website. And so I would always read about her her method as a writer. It's really, really good stuff. MelissaMcPhail.com. You guys check it out. But you could buy her books off there signed. And I started looking at it. I was like, this is like five bucks more than what Amazon's charging. So I got the other three books in her series off there. Uh, guys, I like to do stuff like that because, one, it's really cool to have your books signed. Let's be real. As a collector, that's really neat. But I like to help the authors out. This is helping them out. They're cutting out the middleman. You're buying directly from them. They're shipping it directly to you. Uh, I would recommend that you guys do that if you're interested in this. But uh, really, I mean, these covers are just otherworldly. These are big boys, though. But uh, yeah, she sent me a you know pretty cool biz card. She sent me a nice handwritten letter, all those things. And of course, she signed each one of them with, uh, with, with quotes from the books and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just a series that uh, I'm interested in getting into after I finish Malazan. There's a couple series that uh, I've looked at that isn't quite a uh, black company or anything like that where I'm saying I'm waiting till like 2023. But uh, this series, The Powder of Shadow Light and uh, Bradley P. Bollier, I, don't, I say his name wrong every time. His Song of the Shattered Sands are ones I'm thinking about starting in 2022 since uh, uh, the Song of the Shattered Sands will be complete. I believe she's putting out, she's writing books six and seven of this together. But these are big, big, big boys. So by the time I think I finish this, she'll probably be done. But let's get on to some stuff that you wonderful, kind, caring people sent me this month. You know, a question that I get constantly is, Mike, do you read comics? And I'm like, yes, of course I read comics. I mean, I talk about comic book stuff on the channel all the time. Then I get, Mike, do you read manga? And I'm like, no, no, I do not. Mike, do you watch anime? No, I do not. It's just uh, never a I refuse to do it kind of thing. I just never really got into it as a medium. I think it's it's very respectable. It's something that a lot of people enjoy. Uh, it's cool. I just I never really have. But everybody used to be like, you got to try out Berserk, you know. And I'd say, hey, you know what? I played that on Dreamcast. It was called Guts Rage. <laughs> but everybody's like, you got to try out Berserk. And I was like, well, I don't have it. Well, uh, my friend here, Patrick, one of my patrons, actually, he actually sent this to me. Uh, I'll just say I haven't taken the plastic off yet, so I haven't gotten to it. But um, uh, it's interesting that you read it the backwards direction, I think. It looks like it's backwards. I don't know how this works, guys. Like I said, this is my first manga. I, I don't know. So um, it's going to happen. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And then a lot of people have been like, well, here's the thing with Berserk. You can't just read volume one and stop. I'm like, so, so how much do I have to read before it, it, I decide if it's for me or not? I'm starting to feel like the Malazan thing. Well, you don't know until you get to like book six. You know? uh, he also sent me this really handsome hardcover collection of Frankenstein with a foreword by Stephen King. Now, I just I just read this again last year for Fright Fest, but I did reread the, uh, the nice uh, foreword by Stephen King. Very cool. Again, guys, uh, I've got a review for this on the channel. If you've never read Frankenstein, I think this is 
one of those books that everyone probably needs to read if you're interested in sci-fi or if you're interested in horror because it's really uh, what uh, Miss Shelley did really kind of pioneered the way for a lot of other people, especially female writers of the time period because I mean, this is like 200 years old, guys. This is a classic for a reason. I think everyone should pick that up and check it out. Another author friend sent me some stuff, guys. I reviewed Kings of Paradise on the channel a while back. Uh, Christopher Rocchio and Richard Nell both sent me their first book last year sometime with the stipulation of nothing, saying you don't have to read it. Uh, I just, if you get around to it, cool. You don't have to review it, no big deal. But I wanted to do them the solid. I did read both. I did enjoy both. I did review both. And so, of course, Richard was very nice and he sent me books two and three of his series. And these covers are just delightful. I love them. But uh, the thing I've heard about this is that if you like Kings of Paradise, you have no idea that books two and three completely blow it away. And if that's true, man, this is going to be a ride. Obviously, this has got to wait until I finish Malazan because I just don't have room in my schedule right now. But these are high on my want-to-read list because I really, really enjoyed that first book. I said it was probably the most bleak world I had visited since Westeros or uh, or Adua from First Law. I guess I kind of add Genobacchus and the Seven Cities from Malazan at this point. But uh, yeah, it's really very atmospheric and a lot of new characters and new abilities, I think, that you probably would like. Uh, Michelle, I told you guys that Michelle kind of spoiled me last month. She sent me all that Harry Potter stuff uh, and some Stephen King and some Michael Crichton. Uh, she continued this month to send me stuff because she's just an angel and I love her to death. I put off getting Colorado Kid for the longest time because I kept telling myself I was going to overpay for that hardcover. Well, that hardcover only went up in price. So I went ahead and just said, I guess I'll just get the paperback one. And she bought it for me like immediately. So got all the hard case crime ones now. Uh, she's bought two of them for me. So thank you, Michelle. It's awesome. Anytime I can have more Stephen King that I didn't already have to my collection, that's always a good day. And then she bought me a couple of books by uh, Scott or Baker or Scott Baker. This is the um, there's the Prince of Nothing. This is the, the sequel series to it, the uh, the Aspect Emperor. And she got me books one and two from that sequel series. That's one, guys, that I'm not doing until 2023 uh, because I've heard this is a very, very, very heavy read. And I want to make sure that I give it the attention that it deserves. Uh, but lots of Dune and Malazan comparisons with that series. And I think that might be the last two that I get in that series because I see book six out of the seven, or book three in that series, out of the four, is going for like $700. Because <laughs> I guess it's out of print or something. So I don't know what the deal with that is. And you, you can't you can't seem to get a, a series uh, matching covers with this. I mean, look at this. It's, it's like just an eighth of an inch too large. I don't know what the deal is with this, why publishers can't get this figured out. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. And uh, thank you, Michelle, for continuing to spoil me. You are the best. Next up is from William. This is a kind gift in that he uh, went ahead and said, look, I appreciate what you do and I like paperbacks, but I really, really think that hardcovers are better for your collection. So he gave me the sequel to um, what was Beyond Redemption, the, uh, the Manifest Illusions, which I haven't read yet. I'd really like to, but this is Mirror's Truth. And again, this cover art that this guy puts out is just next level. I love it. It looks a lot like Brian Lee Durfee's cover art. And, of course, Bone Shard's daughter. I think that this... I really don't know anything about it. I just hear so many other booktubers talk about it. So um, I, I think that book two is actually going to be coming out here probably before I even get into Drowning Empire. But uh, very, very handsome uh, cover there. And, yeah, never going to get mad about hardcover. So thank you, William. And then uh, someone actually sent me... I guess one of them got lost or they're still just waiting on it. He sent me a message saying, hey, I got you the... Uh, the uh, Horus Heresy Trilogy. Now, I believe that these are part of Warhammer 40,000. I think that's what it's called, 40K, whatever. Everybody always just sends me the, the, the gif of the guy in the Fallout-looking armor that says the Emperor's Please whenever I talk about the series. But uh, I, I got two of them, and I think one of them either got lost in the mail or maybe changed his mind. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. He just sent me a message saying that he had sent me the trilogy. So, uh, again, this is one that's very, very long-term, very far away. But, man... Those are some handsome mass markets, aren't they? I love it. I love anything that uses this gold or silver font. It's just reflective. It's really, really cool. But it's a series I know nothing about, but the fandom is huge for it. It really is. And for the longest time, I thought that was like a, yeah, like a Fallout thing. Because like I said, I saw the people in the, in the battle armor, and it always kind of looked like a Fallout. But again, who knows? Uh, Madison, one of my mods on my Discord, 
she gave me, she found two copies of The Terminal Man at her bookstore and she sent me the other one because she is just a darling. So thank you because I had said that it's hard to find those early Michael Crichton stuff on hardcover in decent condition. You know, uh, The Andromeda Strain, Congo, Sphere, Eaters of Dead, things like that. And uh, so uh, one down, one down. So thank you, Matt. It's very cool. <laughs> You gotta love how corny the covers were back then. It's so cool, right? But uh, I'm always happy to add more of Crichton on the channel. So thank you, Madison. Another big question I always get is, when are you getting into Gene Wolfe? Well, look, I'm not getting into Book of the New Sun until my brain has recovered from Malazan because I heard it's even more dense than Malazan. But uh, Dominic sent me the fifth head of Cerberus by uh, by Mr. Wolf here. And his, his art is just so cool, isn't it? I love the art that he uses for his books. Uh, another one that I don't know when I'll get to, but if this is a standalone, if this is one a book one of one, uh, it'll probably it might actually happen before I get to Book of the New Sun. I'm not really sure. And then uh, we got Leon here sent me Agatha Christie. Uh, I think Agatha Christie's great. Look in high school, uh, a lot of people were like, "Oh, Sherlock Holmes, you got to read some Arthur Conan Doyle." And I read a couple of them and I liked them. I liked them. But then I read the Poirot novels, and I liked them even more. So I always just kind of considered him uh, the, the superior version. I've read about Death on the Nile. I read, uh, uh, I've read, and then there were none. I've also read Murder on the Orient Express in high school because that's what my library had, and, and I've liked everything. So I would not mind revisiting this at all and actually talking about some Agatha Christie on the channel if that is something that people are interested in. And also, I talked about this in my weekly update, but for those who missed it, Leon also noticed that I did not have a dust jacket for my second Crichton collection. And so he sent me his dust jacket. That is the most thoughtful, kind thing I can think of because it makes it look a million times better to have this dust jacket on it. So thank you, Leon. That is super, super thoughtful. I do appreciate that because I wish that maybe some publishers would do that offer, you know, to sell like the dust jackets because... There are some collectors who don't like the dust jackets. I require the dust jackets. I love them. I think they make the books look so much more slick. So uh, that is a very wonderful gift. Thank you very, very much, Leon. That's very kind. Uh, Bone Ships was sent to me by Cyril. This one actually got lost in the mail, and he had to send me it again. <laughs> so uh, it, Amazon's been really just uh, just keeping a good track record through this whole uh, buyers that shall not be named, haven't they? Uh, I don't know about you guys, but everything I order on Prime these days, like, yeah, it'll be there in four days. I'm like, well, I'm glad I'm paying for two days shipping, but that's a can of worms for another time. But uh, R.J. Barker is, and I think I have his Age of Assassins I haven't read yet, so I'll probably finish that before I would start this series. But uh, I think two or three are out now, and he seems to be kind of one of those under the radar kind of fantasy authors that's really kind of just ripping things up right now. So thank you, Cyril. And this is the one from Sean. This is actually the first thing that I got in my P.O. box. Yes, guys, I have a P.O. box now. There are so many people who are like, look, I want to get you something, but it's nothing that you have on your Amazon wish list. How do I send you something? I'm like, well, look, my wife doesn't like me giving out the home address. You know? So I finally went and got a P.O. box. If you want to send something, the, uh, the, the address is in the description below. But the first thing that I got is this really incredible version of Harry Potter Sorcerer by Mina Lima, I think it's called, of Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone. And it's really, it's like a pop-up book, but you got to kind of build it yourself, you know? And my eight-year-old is obsessed with the idea of us putting this together. So this summer, we're going to kind of take our time and do it piece by piece, very slowly, and make sure that it is done correctly. And we might turn that into a reread of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. So uh, I didn't even know that anything like this existed. This is super cool. This, this is my third copy now of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, but uh, I never get mad about more handsome versions of Harry Potter books. And I'm like, dang, I gotta get all these now because these all look really awesome. So I don't know if these are all done or if it's like the illustrated edition where they're doing one at a time or how, but Sean, this is, very, very handsome gift. Thank you so much. And I can't think of maybe a better gift that I could have gotten in my very first uh, P.O. Box offering. And then from, this came with no name, actually. And I, I feel very bad that I can't thank you because this is probably one of the coolest coffee mugs that I've ever gotten. Not only is it a Lord of the Rings mug that came with no name, but it also has uh, the one you can't see right now. You have to put hot coffee in it. And it you know what? Hang on, I'm gonna put some hot coffee in it and show you. And voila, 
As Gandalf would say, it's a secret now that only coffee can tell. And as for the coffee, Kimberly also sent me something for my P.O. Box. She sent me three pounds of organic coffee from Olympia Coffee in Washington. Someone I had never heard of, but when I did a little research online, I found they're very, very popular. And I just what I just kind of made in here. And I have to say, guys, if you don't mind my saying so, that is a damn fine cup of coffee. So thank you, Kimberly. You've kept me, uh, this will last me at least a month, I'm thinking. But uh, <laughs> it is very, very good, guys. So if you don't know anything about them, check them out. But guys, that was the month of April and all the new gizmos and gadgets and, well, books that I've added to the collection. Did you get anything new in April that you want to talk about? Drop in the comments and let me know. If you want to tell me anything about any of these series that I don't know anything about, I would love to hear about them. So I will talk to you guys there.